All right. This Hangout on Air is live. Uh, for those of you who have been waiting <laughs> patiently for the last 25 minutes for me to figure out what is happening, uh, thank you so much, and I'm sorry. I have no idea what was going on. Uh, apparently, YouTube has decided to uh, not allow me to make a regular YouTube video with chat today. So no Hangout uh, with the chat. So I do have a... Uh, Q and A app is open, so uh, we can use that. Um, super sorry for this. We might have to go old school and use the YouTube link, uh, just the regular YouTube video link that you can find on my channel. Uh, you can also find it uh, other places too, and just write comments <laughs> and refresh the page, or have like two versions of my video open, and one is muted, and you're writing comments on that one and refreshing it, and the other one is. Uh, the one you're using to listen to me and watch. So I'm sorry to have to put you through that. I don't know what happened, but it wouldn't let me start the, it wouldn't let me go live. It wouldn't let me do it. It was almost like it was treating me like I was not in charge of things. It was trying to take the control. But anyway, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, this is something that I randomly wanted to do today. I just wanted to do some mapping. I have my Cintiq here. I have my Photoshop file that I'm going to be uh, mapping on. I have your questions and stuff that I'm probably going to be uh, a little bit distracted while doing you know, this sort of thing. Uh, so I might not be able to get to you guys that quickly. But I'm going to try my best. Uh, this is just a huge obstacle that we're <laughs> going to have to go through together. So uh, if you're not watching this live, um, thank you for listening to me ramble about basically nothing that affects you at all. Um, today I want to draw Sursaline. I've drawn many different variations of Sursaline in the past. Uh, this is uh, part of it. It's got actually some campaign information, but that was my first drawing of Sursaline. Um, I also have like the whole map of the world here, which is called Enkea. Uh, Sursaline is just a region. But that has all changed. It's all kind of different. The layout of things has changed uh, since we released be a better campaign master, which is a, one of our more recent supplements on absolutetabletop.com. But that writing that supplement helped me to build the world. So that was just really important for me to, uh, to get that done and more concrete in my mind. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just stop rambling and I'm going to share this, uh, my screen and <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing at a comment. I'm getting the impression that live streaming through YouTube is extremely stable. You have no idea how stable it is. It's as stable as a room that you keep horses in. That was a terrible joke. That was a dad joke. But anyway, I'm going to share my screen right now so you can see kind of what I've got going on. All right. Here's hoping you can see that. Uh, basically, I have... Uh, Let's show you what I got. I have the blank background, right? And I uh, imported what Sursaline looks like from this map over here, which is a map that I pulled from Be A Better Campaign Master. This is basically my world, but there's going to be more stuff in the kind of nooks and crannies when it's done with. Um, also, I think the shape's going to be a little bit different. I imagine that there's going to be, um, I'll just show you, uh, that this is actually going to come out a little bit like this and maybe like reach out like these will connect what's a good way of putting it um, something more like this shape uh, but we'll see I just like the idea of this large channel being there but anyway I brought that over here which is you know because that's my goal is to focus on this one area now what what I'll usually do is I'll usually take my big map and I actually have a camcorder that has a projector screen on it and so I'll take a picture of like a close-up region. Like I would take a picture of this island of Sursaline. And then I would project it on a wall. And on a, like a large sheet of paper, which I taped to the wall. And then I would trace it on the wall. Which is a really uh, just amateur way to uh, scale your maps up. Things like that. So I'm just going to check the, uh, the stream. Make sure everything's going well. A lot of you are... Uh, Talking questions, great. I suspect he's run into a tech glitch and is resetting stuff. 100% what's going on. Um, uh, let's see, we got, uh, I did see your PM, Jaren. 
Um, why you so rad, Barker? Bro, I wish I could, I were radder than this, than stumbling through a YouTube live stream. Um, but uh, let me show you what I'm going to do here. Let's jump right into the, uh, uh, the Photoshop and just have some fun with it. Uh, I also, I love mapping while other people are mapping. Um, so if you want to do some maps, pull out a sheet of paper and a pencil map with me. But this is going to be more than mapping, right? This is going to be world building. I'm going to take this very, very vague idea of Sir Celine right here. And I, like, you got the forest, right? You've got, you know, some locations that I haven't really specified what they are. Um, this is going to be a combination of mapping and world building. I'm going to tell you kind of what's going on in my mind. Um, uh, kind of what's, uh, uh, what I'm thinking of for the Winds of Sir Celine campaign that I've been running on this channel. So uh, I don't know why you feel like you've just come in in the middle of a conversation, Dwayne, but um, I don't know, we'll fix it. Let's get started. So uh, here we are, here's Sir Celine, and I'm gonna take this and I'm actually gonna lower the opacity very lightly. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I wanna draw over it, right? So I've got the coastline, I've got my pen, which I can draw lightly or harder, right? You'll see, I love this. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start tracing, but I'm gonna be, I'm gonna exaggerate certain things a little bit less than I normally would. Um, I'm not going for hyper-realistic. I'm going for, in fact, that's a little bit I'm going for uh, kind of like a, a map that was drawn by somebody in the world, not someone that has access to satellite photos. You know what I mean? So here's some lines. That wasn't very good, so I'm going to turn this puppy around, switch over here to brush size. Uh, the Cintiq, while I'm at it, is just the most amazing thing I've ever really used. It's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, the land is not really purple, um, <laughs> but uh, the the map absolutely is. Um, I chose purple to resemble Sir Celine, uh, the in the what do you call it? The political map mode. So and it's awesome because I just made a mistake here. Well, let's see, I made a mistake right there by making it like my hand jerked right, but I am going to keep that mistake. I like it. So, wavy lines. Um, a lot of times we're tempted, and I'm, I fall into this pitfall too. And it's not necessarily a pitfall, because if you're good at this, then you know what does it really matter? You should do what you're good at. But uh, when I zoom in on a map and start drawing more detailed coastlines, I have a tendency to draw them you know, more detailed, right? When I zoom in on a certain island, I make them more fractalized. I, draw more detail uh, in the uh, the little you know fjords and stuff like that uh, draw some more islands almost like it's an atlas which makes sense if it's an atlas but I'm taking a page out of Matt Click's book he just recently made a map of an island in his world of Aranoth called uh, Shale or The Shale I think it's just Shale and um, what's really cool about it is he it's He's really good at drawing simple maps that are believable. Like I want to hand this out to the players and have them believe that somebody in Sir Celine drew this map. You know, um, you know, it's arguable that they probably wouldn't have <laughs> gone through all these fjords and mapped them out. But uh, you know, it's got to be accurate while still being a little bit believable. I'm a big fan of those cartoon-like maps, and I don't, you know, I always say that, but I don't mean it in any sort of insult. I really like maps that are exaggerated uh, scale-wise. So, so watch this. Let's, um, boom, there we have it. Uh, that is the kind of Sir Celine. That's the the outline that I'm going for. Now, I could have decided to instead here. I'll uh, make a new layer just to show you what I could have done. Uh, I could have gone here and been like, oh, I want this to be more, you know, a river I want to be there and I want to put an island here and 
you know, I want uh, this to be more jagged, you know, um, which is really cool, but not at all what I'm looking for in this map. Now, this is where I tell you that I might absolutely change my mind here. Um, <clears throat> nothing I say about this world in this live stream uh, is canon because <laughs> I change my mind all the time. Uh, but I just, I'm kind of really uh, enjoying the idea of this sort of, this sort of map. So I'm going to go in and, uh, what, what did I do? So, oh, the layer's hidden. Oops. My bad. Okay. All right. So I'm going to zoom in here. Actually, wait, this was on two, but brush size two. And I'm going to zoom in here and kind of fix these little areas. Erase these little lines. It's like magic paper. Um, and what I'm doing right here is probably just the worst thing I could possibly do, going in and being too specific about things right off the bat. So. Um, I'm going to zoom out. There we got it. Now let's draw the rest of these islands around the area. Huh? Nope, too light. Um, check in the Q and A every once in a while. Hi, Alex. Alex Phillips says hi. That's pretty, uh, pretty awesome. Hello. Uh, I'm going to every once in a while just refresh the YouTube video to see if you have any questions in the comments because I'm not getting a live chat, despite the fact that YouTube says I do. It's, I don't know, maybe E3 is throwing them for a loop. Speaking of E3, I just got done watching the. I'm gonna make this island a little bit bigger. Cool. I just got done watching uh, some Battlefield 1 gameplay, and I'm sold. I don't know if any of you play any first-person shooters or enjoy the Battlefield franchise, but uh, absolutely sold. Coolest, One of the coolest things I've ever seen. Uh, very cool, indeed. Um, it'll be nice to finally have like a historical first-person shooter. I am a big fan of... Kind of the old Battlefield 1942 and stuff like that. Is this Barker with a B? This is Barker with a B. Absolutely. And that was, that's a, that's a callback, man. That's an old school callback. I'm also getting rid of this pointy uh, part of uh, the northern section. You see this? That uh, on the big map right here. Oh, no, not that one. Here, I'm getting, I'm getting, going to get rid of that. It doesn't really fit. It kind of bugs me every time. Again, I'm going to do a little bit more of this. Um, but for now, um, we'll see. We'll see how it works. You know, in fact, I might start that now. Might start that process of changing, changing this up. go okay all right so got my coastlines uh, done I do believe so I am going to all right there it is so silly now I'm gonna adjust the the size of this and kind of the placement um, I feel like this island up top this one right here this kind of elongated one is probably not the most necessary to show the entire thing. So I'm going to scroll up a little bit, move this to the left. I just want to make this kind of as, as large a map as possible um, just to give me the most possible room, you know what I mean, for uh, for drawing this stuff on the inside. So because basically what I'm going to start doing is, and see now I just, uh, I always do this. I screwed up basically the whole thing because I, 
um, you know, now it's no longer aligned with the purple map. But that doesn't really matter because the purple map, which I'm going to um, increase the opacity a little bit, is just here for me to see where stuff is on the island, right? So I see that there's a forest here. So that, that way when I hide it, I know that there's going to be kind of a forest in this area. Now, I'm going to do something that I don't usually do, and I'm going to call this an outline layer. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I'm going to take this map, this big map, right? And I'm actually going to resize it a little bit to try to get it to, to fit for the most part in uh, a drawn. Oh, that's fine. That's enough. Um, and I'm going to go to the outline layer. Oh, I have to hit enter. Uh, I, all these live streams with me using Photoshop is like half watching me make maps and half watching me stumble through Photoshop like a blind person. It's awful. Uh, I just got a question from Jaren. Have you ever tried campaign cartographer, Barker? Has a lot of cool future features. Um, I have. I own campaign cartographer. I use it in a lot of different ways. Um, <clears throat> I use it primarily for my dungeon design stuff. I made a cool map of uh, the Wayward Wanderer, actually, in our Wayward Wanderer supplement was made using the, was made using Campaign Cartographer. Same with the map of Brook in the Brook supplement and the map of the Temple of Gephion in the Brook supplement, all made using Campaign Cartographer. Um, that's, uh, uh, it's, it's a cool, cool little program. Uh, I prefer Photoshop for my overland maps because while I'm not very good at drawing, which is why I use Campaign Cartographer so much, um, I'm better at drawing the overland maps in Photoshop than I am uh, in Campaign Cartographer. And also, I just want to get better at Photoshop. So, And, and you know, the last part is Campaign Cartographer is not an easy application to use. It's not like, hey, I'm going to use Campaign Cartographer because I don't know how to use Photoshop. Dude, it's it's pretty advanced. You know, I'm not going to say it's as ad it's as advanced as Photoshop, but it's not slouching, you know? So uh, there's a lot of advanced features. It's more tailored for maps, but, you know, it still uses, uh, you know, other names of certain things. Also, it's a CAD program. I don't know if anyone here is familiar with CAD. It's, it's like a, it's a drafting program, not a drawing program. So those are just some fun facts about it. Uh, I think it's cool. Uh, if you, yeah, like you said, if you can afford it, it's it's cool. But uh, and I've used it before in the past. But uh, I prefer Photoshop. I do not think Photoshop is easy to use. Not even a tiny, tiny bit. Uh, going through some questions really quick. Since you mentioned E3, did you see Mount and Blade Banner Lord? Uh, no, I haven't. I don't even know what that is. Oh man, I'm I'm, I'm I need to to pay more attention to the news. Um, did you make this map or did Nate do this for you? Either the way the map has a neat feel to it. Okay, so I made this map. The reason the map has a neat feel to it is because I watch all of Nate's videos. Really big fan of uh, the way uh, Nate from WASD20. Uh, also, Sellsword Maps now is his new kind of um, map making cartography uh, uh, freelance project that he's doing. So you should check him out there. Uh, I learn from him, so I get a lot from him. I've also tried GIMP. Uh, it is very similar to, to Photoshop, and it's also free. And Photoshop is stupid expensive. It makes me so mad how expensive it is. So, yeah. Um, Yarl DM, now that I've played Overwatch, I'll never go back to a generic shooter again, I think. Yeah, I agree. I, I enjoy Overwatch. But, man, watching a massive Zeppelin get destroyed and collide into the ground, destroying all the 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 cover and buildings and gardens underneath it in one massive explosion. And then having the the, the players in Battlefield One have to fight through the skeletal remains of the Zeppelin. Ah man, you can't beat that. I love I love the Battlefield series. Anyway, back to map making. Um, so I'm not sure how I'm gonna do a lot of this, but but here's some, uh, you know, things I'm going to do with this outline. This, that's what I mentioned. Right, I'm going to show this. Got my brush tool. And I'm actually going to start kind of, I'm going to outline areas where the forest is, right? Forest. I'm writing that here. I'm not sure what you can see because it's so 
maybe I'll make this, op I'll bring the opacity down again. Um, it's just so faint, but that's the point of this. And, and you'll see it in a minute, so bear with me. Uh, I'm gonna put river, there's a river here. Uh, there's a river here. There's a lake here, I'm gonna write lake. Uh, there's mountains here. Uh, all the way across the bottom, these are actually called the spires, which are extremely tall mountains, um, <clears throat> impassable. So the only way through them is through this this town here called, I'm going to put two H's, it's called Hallow Hall, which is now a smoldering ruin. Uh, there's a city up here called um, Talonfall, city here called Myra. Uh, there's a city here, I'm not sure what I named it, I can't remember, and a city here called uh, Maricor. I'm just going to put MK. There's also a city here and... Uh, the thicket is a forest on this part landmass right there and I'm going to uh, put that a little bit of that on this map also here is an adventuring location I'm gonna it's called Marthor it's a ruined city an old city <clears throat> now basically I'm gonna see what I did there see the coastlines they're 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 gone now they're back the outlines gone now there it is that's kind of showing me what I've already committed to, where the forest goes, stuff like that. And that way I can decide to you know, make a new layer if I want and turn the opacity of this one super down and then just have some guidelines you know, to know where stuff is gonna be going. Now, I know a lot of you don't use Photoshop, but I'm just kind of going through, uh, going through my methods. I'm actually not redoing my map, Dwayne. I've, I've already done that. <laughs> I had just a small bit of a map made and I've decided to uh, come up with something different um, because the other one didn't really work for me. It just, you know, when, when something doesn't work for you, you change it. And um, so I made this one in the Be a Better Campaign Master Supplement and now I'm just elaborating on it. Um, I'm filling it out, fleshing it out. So, all right, so I'm going to do forest stuff. Now this is where... This is where Nate just beats me. I gotta channel my inner Nate here. Um, I'm gonna zoom in, right? Oh, no, no, I'm not, okay. Now I am. I'm gonna zoom in here. And uh, I'm gonna start kind of drawing some trees and see you know, how much I enjoy the look of those trees, which I don't, not even a little bit. So um, I'm gonna try a few different types of trees out. I don't really like that second one being that close. Now what I want is I want the, uh, the forest to be the most dense right around here, right? So maybe I'll instead come here. And actually it's pretty tall, so. And start drawing trees. Now you'll notice the, the sketch, sketch quality of this is not absolutely phenomenal but um, you know when you zoom out of something I can tell that that's a forest there you know and that's that's the most important thing for me is to know uh, where certain things are also I mentioned earlier I'm taking kind of a note out of uh, Matt clicks shale book so I'm actually going to go to the absolute tabletop official group and I'm going to click on photos because I know he posted it here and I'm gonna zoom down and I'm actually gonna share this screen with you <clears throat> Look at this map. This is uh, this was made by Matt Click from A Fistful of Dice and Absolute Tabletop, uh, along with myself and James Carney and Tim Carney. And this is a map of an island that is uh, on the uh, kind of northern coast of Aranoth, his homebrew world. Kind of, I think, the northeastern coast. 
And look, I, I just love how basic it is. I love that. I just love how, you know, it was so small on the map, but then you zoom in and then it's larger uh, once it's been uh, elaborated upon. And I want to do the exact same thing. That's my goal here. But I want to do that with Sir Celine. So I'm going to keep that open in front of me. Uh, oftentimes, I'll always do this. I'll keep uh, an atlas open a uh, or uh, what's another thing? Um, like an actual world atlas. I love I love that sort of thing. Or like the map of Middle Earth, stuff like that in front of me while I'm while I'm working. So just looking at the comments real quick. Do, 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 do. <clears throat> no chat. We don't have a chat. Uh, there is no chat. That's why you're having problems getting into it because there is absolutely uh, uh, YouTube has decided to rise up against me. That's what happened. That's what. That's all I'm going to say. Um, Okay. Um, hey, Barker, ducking in, saying that you were hyped that I have a live stream up. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, jump in and watch it later. Uh, you know, this is one of those live streams that I do that has really no format. It's just basically me doing a thing. And But a lot of people have said that they get um, good kind of inspiration from this stuff. And that's really why I'm doing it. So, uh, And then the Q&A app, which is... Hard for me to keep track of. Uh, what resolution do you use for map for your map? Uh, oh man, that's uh, <laughs> that's not a uh, thing that I know. I have resolution 150, which I'm pretty sure um, 300 PPI is the uh, the common resolution which people like. Uh, don't you think you'll just end up deleting the Long Island on top on the top later anyway? Why? Why would I? No, I added it there for a reason. I uh, have this here um, just in case I want to put something on it. I have this here because it's here in my world. You know, if I, um, it's a good strategy if you're a GM to not talk about this island. Like, for instance, if I'm running a game, I'm not going to mention this island to my players unless they specifically say, you know, I'm going to journey up north. Or if they decide, or if I decide, you know, I'm going to run a campaign on this island. You know, we'll see how that works. Maybe that's where the, uh, the the giants are from you know that's where the frost giants live so the frost worms maybe they live there I don't know yet but but uh, no it's it's there it's there because it's there um yeah no I actually Dwayne I actually don't like automating trees I don't like making brushes out of stuff it's strange um, but I I'd, I'd prefer to draw it. I prefer to draw all my trees and things. So, um, but that is totally the fast way to do this, one hundred percent, no doubt. Um, I'm going to make the trees a little bit bigger though, so that'll solve some of the uh, length of time it takes issue, right? Um, so I'm going to actually zoom out, and I'm looking at Matt's map because I like the size of his trees here, and I'm going to draw a tree about the size that I think it would fit on mine. And it's very basic on his. I really, really like it. And he just has a triangle. It's a little bit... There. Actually, those are going to come out to be probably a little bit smaller, but that's all right. Um, yeah, because the whole idea is that I'm going to... Um, I'm going to end up changing stuff anyway. But I, I really like drawing the individual trees. Wow, that tree was awful. I actually found a really cool thing in... My wife has a crafting room that she uses to keep her crafting supplies and stuff because she's a very crafty person. Um, she makes just tons of things. And um, 
I wish I could make things. It's probably like the thing that I can't do that I just wish I could, you know, craft. Uh, I also don't have a lot of space for it. So um, here, watch what we're going to do here is. Oh, I'm not going to need to mess around. Um, but I found the uh, Atlas of Middle Earth by Karen Wynne Fonstad. One of the coolest books I've ever just accidentally discovered uh, in one of our rooms. So that is, uh, that was a huge find. Really enjoyed finding that. Uh, this river is going to go there, so I don't want to clog that area up too much. Um, but I don't really care about these um, because the river is just going to, when it comes, it's going to flow behind it. I'll pick it up from there. Uh, for some people this, uh, who would know this, this is the Anderwood that I'm drawing, which uh, has recently been just renamed officially to the Crimson Wood. And it's named that because of its crimson leaves. The entire forest is just blood red, and it's uh, super magical. Uh, the one thing I really like about this world is that its magic comes in like hot spots. Uh, and that's like the, these hot spots are the source of magic uh, in the world. And I think there are going to be three of them in the whole world. And people make pilgrimages to the, these hot spots, and they're they're kind of magic is kind of flowing out of them, not unlike you know a volcano. Really interesting. I think it's a really interesting aspect. So that's uh, that's what I'm going for. And one of those things is this big forest. Uh, another, I believe, is going to be a uh, a floating mountain. Um, and I'm going to do something else with this body of water right here, uh, the Magnetica. I love this body of water, and I want to do something really cool with that. So, <clears throat> you have to excuse me. Uh, did somebody say crafting? Yes, I did, Jacob. I absolutely did. 70 DPI is common for screen. 300 DPI for print. Uh, awesome, awesome news. And I'm definitely going to be printing this for me. I try to make everything for print just because... I don't know. I love it. Um, does the world concept enforce the land mass, or are you flexible with bits of world building depending on what happens during the mapping of the map, of the well map? That's a really good question. And I think actually uh, we talked about this in an episode of Roll Up and Die, our podcast that we're going to be posting. Um, it's on mapping, and maybe it's already been posted. I, I've, we're ahead of the game in Roll Up and Die, so I forget. It's either already been posted or it's being posted this coming Sunday. Um, but either way, uh, the advice was, if you're having trouble building your world, work on your map. If you're having trouble working on your map, work on your world. So kind of exchange, you know, get find that cool balance. Because I like to do a lot of both at the same time. The difference now, though, is that for the most part, this world is made, right? You know, there's a lot of empty spots, and I'm going to fill those in with different things, and I'm really excited to do that, right? To turn just like this region into a large map. You can't see my hands, but I'm, I'm, I'm zooming in on the screen. I'm pretending like I'm zooming in on the screen, not in like I would with an iPad, but uh, you know, zooming in on just Gaudia and making a huge, like, I don't say huge, but just making an eight and a half by eleven inch map of just that one region, or you know. Or just this region. Really zooming in. Um, what am I even talking about? Uh, but the, you know, so I've already have I already have the bulk of the land masses made. Now some of the th these things I'm going to be changing. Like I said earlier, I'm going to be extending this out, you know, kind of like that instead of like this pointy nipple that it currently is. Um, but you know, for the most part, it's already drawn. So I'm kind of stuck in these limitations. But the best part is I kind of like these limitations that I'm stuck in. So, um, I hope that uh, answers your question. Let's see if we have any other comments or questions popping up on the comment feed. Again, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's no chat. This is super, super bumming me up. Um, I'm working on building a Dragon Eggs Benedict. Is has got to be one of the top ten names I've seen right below Shank Ranger. Uh, I'm working on building a world of my own, but I am actually quite worried about my map 
finding my options as a DM, commitment issues. Bro, I'm right there with you. What if I want to change the map after I've shown it to my players? There is no hard and fast rule for this man, but uh, I don't know. I, I There are some people that will say, once you show it to your players, it's canon. But I'm obviously breaking that rule because in session of session one of Sir Celine, I showed them a whole different map. Um, but the thing that I'm doing is that this map and the original map, like this map that you're looking at right now, and the original map are similar enough to where the roads and things and the, you know, the, um, uh, the roads and the, uh, let me open this up. Now there, there are no roads on this. Oh yeah, there are, there are roads. What am I talking about with my life? The roads, these blue dots, like these roads are close enough to where they were before so I can adapt and change things without completely obliterating what I've already created. So I think that's probably the most important thing that you, um, change what you need to change. But if you find yourself wanting to drastically change something, I'd remind yourself that whatever it was that you came up with last time is still cool and just, you know, stick with it. Um, and that, uh, you'll be able to come up with some other cool ideas on top of it in the future. You know, a lot of times we tend to get caught up in new ideas that we forget that our, we're creative people, man. So our, our brains are going to come up with other cool things. We don't have to delete everything. We, we don't have to replace everything we come up with thinking that we're never going to have a cool idea like it again. That's just not how it works. So, um, <clears throat> that's no nipple. That's a goblin nose. It, yeah, it's true. That's true. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's draw some more trees. I'm not sure how I'm going to draw the ruins of Marthor here, but uh, I'm probably going to take a peek at uh, the the map tips that Nate left in. Ooh, that's not very nice. Um, that Nate wrote for us in Be a Better Campaign Master, book one. And I'm probably going to uh, just copy what he did because he made some excellent drawings of ruins. And so I'm going to, I think I'm just going to continue taking a note out of his book. So, um, all right, so we got the forest being built. I really like to jump around um, and start kind of looking at different ways to you know, draw lakes and rivers and stuff. Um, the Winds of Sir Celine game, actually, this is something I should tell you, uh, is going to be live on Friday the 24th. And this is going to be at uh, 6 p.m. Pacific. So that's 9 p.m. Eastern. And the Winds, and oftentimes I'll talk to the players outside of the game and see, hey, wh where do you think you're going to go? You know, so I kind of know what to prep. I've prepped a little bit of everywhere, but I like to... Um, I don't do it very often, but you know, about once a campaign, I'll end up asking the players, where do you think you're going to go next session? You know, so I can really develop it. And they've decided that since this former city of Hallow Hall has just collapsed, they're going to go there. And they're currently here. So uh, they're going to need to follow the old road, which I'm going to go up here. It's called the old road, or sometimes known as the first road. And it... Oops, edit, step forward. Uh, it goes, goes here. And then there's another road, goes up to Talonfall. So um, they're going to be on this old road going uh, through the Anderwood, right? But it's been recently cleared by the people of Myra because the winds have saved the people of Myra from certain doom at the hands of a mimic. Um, but uh, so they're probably going to run into uh, their old friend. And I had a pen in my mouth. Sorry, I'm making a new layer called locations. Uh, I can't believe that 22 people are finding this interesting enough to watch. But um, they're probably going to come across a location at the second crossing of the river, uh, actually, no, it'll be at the first crossing of the river. Um, 
No, it won't. It's going to be right here. Right here. And this is going to be Randall's hut. I don't know if you guys remember Randall. But he... Uh, Randall is a uh, a non-player character, an NPC that the, that wins met in the early stages. I think it was session two in the early stages of the game, and one of my favorite NPCs I've ever made. I love him, and he has this hut that is surrounded by strange wards. runes um and let's there we go and so that's where his hut is going to be if i remove the outline this is the map that we have so far which doesn't seem like much but uh i've got the the coastline set but um anyway they're probably going to stop by randall's hut and talk to randall for the first time since ever and uh, oh, by the way, if you're watching this, it's probably going to be a couple spoilers. I'll try to keep it spoiler free, but um, I, there's there's going to be a couple little tiny things. Uh, either way, the last time they were at Randall's hut, you know, he was kind of struggling. He had just got kicked out of Myra um, for poaching, uh, and so he kind of had to go into the forest to try to get to Maricor, and he stumbled across this hut. Now we know that this hut once belonged to the eighth, um, excuse me, the the fifth wind of Sir Celine, who uh, kind of turned evil near the end of it for some strange reasons. Uh, <clears throat> and we'll go over those at the intro of the next session. But um, anyway, he discovered his hut and kind of took up root in there and was hunting around Marthor until he was captured by Durgar underneath the ground here. Durgar kind of like uh, dwarves. Uh, they're the equivalent of the drow, but for dwarves. Uh, and they kind of lived underground here. Um, and they captured him, and the winds rescued him. So now they're going to stop by his hut one more time. But they're going to realize that things have changed. Their actions in the world have changed some things, excuse me, uh, around them. Sometimes for the better. Sometimes it's debatable whether it's better. I'm also drinking coffee. I'm just constantly consuming. That's my life. Um, you know, what? in the last session, they were in Maricor, the, the small struggling village that they started out in. And now it's becoming kind of a hub of population. You know, a lot of people are trying to get there and discover, uh, you know, what's to be found, what money is to be made in the Anderwood, in, excuse me, in the Crimsonwood. And um, so that's kind of a, a, an important a plot point, you know, is it is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Um, so, we'll uh, I'm going to start kind of drawing these locations for where the players are going to be in this coming session because that's the most important information, right? Think about what the most important information is for your game, and then draw that first. So let's zoom in here, and I'm going to draw a. Uh, this is. That's the lake here. Let me pull this up really quick. Maricor is kind of on the back of this lake. So um, we're going to draw the we're going to draw the lake first. That's just smart, isn't it? Um, we're going to make a new layer. Tim, you'd be so proud of me making all these new layers. Oh, yeah. And make a nice thick lake line. Nope. Decided against that shape. All right. There's the lake. And Maricor is going to be just directly next to it. So I'm going to start drawing kind of like I did with Randall's place. Little huts. And...
There's a longhouse here too. So let's see if I can draw a longhouse. I've never done it. Um, like a barn. <laughs> yeah, that's not terrible. That was supposed to be smoke coming out of a chimney, but it didn't work out. That's okay. Nope. As you can see, I'm not the best drawer in the world. But that's okay. At the end of the day, this is for more world creation than mapping. And I think maybe what I'll end up doing is paying Nate to make me a better map. You know what? I'm not even zoomed in enough. That's what I've got so far. <laughs> Man, nice and pixelated for you, right? Um, Some buildings up here. I'm not sure how this is going to look when I'm done with it, but probably not very good. I think the idea is just keep making houses just to show that there's a settlement around here, you know? Next door neighbor dog is barking. I'm not sure you can hear it, but it's going a little crazy. Okay, you know what? I kind of like that. I like that uh, this longhouse is kind of the focal point, but you know what? I, I think, let's see what it'll look like if I put a couple more makeshift homes here, huts. Yes, all right. Okay, that is AmeriCorps. That is uh, super amateur, but but you know what? That's that's what it is. And I'm probably going to add some stuff to it a little bit later. Um, all right, looking around at the comments and questions. You have a catalytic event that changes the world to match the new version of the map. Yeah, you could do that. If you're if you feel really uncomfortable about changing your map after you've already told the players what it looks like. Yeah, you can destroy stuff. You know, it's your world, man. You can go a little crazy with it. Um, note ruins by drawing buildings with the rubble around and uneven tops. Yes, for sure. Um, let's see. Any tips for using layers easily? I know they were way confusing when I first tried using them. Uh, just use them. I don't know. You, they're they're amazing when you use a lot of them because it just gets easy to delete something. You just go in here and hide it. If I'm like, nope, I want to delete this. Oh, see, and I already I drew this. I drew Maricor on the wrong layer. You see why layers are so important to make? Oh my gosh. So I, I'm going to have to cut that out and paste it onto the locations layer, which I'll do later on. Um, I'll bet you a million dollars, somebody. Uh, commented on that <laughs> and said, hey, man, you should really have put Miracor on its own layer. And I'd be like, you are smart, and I am dumb. All right, actually looking at the comments. Man, live chat would be so much easier. Um, <clears throat> see, I'm happy. I'm happy not much else is going on. Uh, DM Drake just uh, commented, and I, I'm his company on his way home, driving home from work. Man, for sure. That's I love that. Um, but yeah, if you guys can get any amount of inspiration from this, man, you're, you're winning. Uh, do you only run online games in Nkea or have you run home games in it too? I actually ran home games in this world before I ran online games. In fact, you know what, let me, I'm going to turn off, I'm going to turn off my screen share while I'm talking to you guys. Hey, I'm still here. Um, I ran Nkea games. In, for my home group before I ran any online games. At that time, it was called Elder, was the name of the world, and I changed the name. 
And yeah, threw a lot of stuff out of the window, changed a lot of other things. But yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Have you played with any of these? Our Jacob Norman sharing me a link of map brushes, uh, which if you're in the Q&A app, you might be able to see other people's posts. I hope you can. Fantasy map brushes, very cool. I have not, I don't know. I feel weird about using them. I always feel weird about using them, probably illogically, but I like to draw my own stuff, even if it's not as good. Like this is obviously not as good as a map brush, and maybe I'll change my mind after drawing this, but I just, I don't know, I enjoy drawing, even though I'm not very good at it. Um, okay, it looks like everybody's pretty caught up. Oh, uh, actually, this person named What Rule Book, great, great name, uh, has given you a layer tip, Jaron. Uh, selecting multiple layers and pressing Control G will group them. You can put geographical stuff in one group, settlements in another, et cetera. Yeah, absolutely. So like right now I have lakes and forest, right? So I can, ba bam select them both, control G, group one, and I can call this geography, right? So then I can hide all the geography and the town of Maricor because I'm an idiot. Um, but I can, yeah, absolutely group things up. That's a super smart idea um, that I haven't been doing. Uh, isn't there a feature to delete questions? Yeah, I think so. Let's see. Done. Ah, that's such a good idea. Yeah. Dude, it's been, it's, it's been a year since I've used this. So I've got no idea. Um, uh, yeah, Questing Beast is such a great mapper. Uh, it, he's got a YouTube channel. It's really phenomenal. Um, you should check him out. Does he still do stuff? Like, it, he's gotta. He's got to. Um, because he was really good. But yeah, I'm a huge fan of how Nate has taken his advice and just run with it and created his own style. Uh, thank you, Jacob, again for that link with those brushes. Um, and uh, I'm definitely going to check them out. I'll, I'll do it. For sure. All right, I've deleted enough comments from there. Do one more refresh and then... All right, let's continue, huh? Uh, I'm actually, you know what? I'm going to take a five-minute break, and I'm going to let my dogs out, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I lied, and I meant a five-second break. I just got a, a, a sparkling water, which is, I drink that and coffee, and that's basically it. And let my dogs out, um, which didn't take that long. So um, but I was going to say something. Oh, yeah, one of the things I'm going to do, and I'll share my screen here, in prepping for this next Winds of Cerceline session, is, uh, and in my most recent video that I just posted a couple days ago, I talk about this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of map out their journey, right? Because they're going to end, like, let's go to this outline here. And so they're going to end in Hallow Hall. In fact, you know what, I'm going to just, um, just draw that there so I can delete the outline right they're going to start here and the next session they're going to journey towards hallow hall i don't know if they're going to reach hallow hall yet so we'll see uh, i might change the name of the game to onward to hallow hall because maybe they'll 
find some cool stuff inside the forest here, and then go to Hallow Hall the next session. We'll see. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of ask myself, all right, how, wh what phases are there in this session, right? So here's a phase in Maricor, right? They're going to be in Maricor for a time. That's going to be a phase. Or maybe I'm going to decide to have them, you know, to, to narrate them leaving from the beginning. Uh, uh, but one of the things that I am going to want to do is describe what it's like to be in Maricor. And one of the things that, that is happening is smoke is billowing out of Hallow Hall, right? I want it, and this is going to be kind of spoiling, but I want there to be smoke on the horizon. I want there to be smoke on the horizon right here, and I want it to have been such a colossal blast that it is raining ash, or like snowing ash down on everywhere. Uh, I just like that idea a lot. Um, I should have made a new layer for notes. See, Jerry, this is this is the smart way to do it. But those things, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna focus on prepping for Maricor for an entire day, and I'm just gonna think about all right, what's it what's it gonna be like there, you know? And then I'm gonna take all my notes and put them on a piece of cardstock, and that's gonna be kind of my Maricor section. Then they're gonna journey to Randall's hut, I think. So I'm gonna do the same thing for that. I'm gonna spend a day just thinking about Randall's hut, what's different, who's there, who they'll run into, um, what they'll run into, what it's like, what it looks like, what the difference is between the last time they journeyed there and this time, and put that all on a sheet of paper, and then I'll organize it and put it on a sheet of cardstock and put that right behind the Maricor cardstock, right? And I'm gonna do that for Maricor, Randall's hut, the forest, Hallow Hall, maybe actually the entrance of Hallow Hall, Hallow Hall itself. And by the end of it, I'll have, you know, five or six sheets of sheets of cardstock stacked up in an order that I think they're going to encounter these things in. You never know uh, with different encounters, combat, non-combat. And that's how I'm going to organize the session. Um, and so making this map is helping me because it's in a way showing me where, where these characters are going to go, what they're going to encounter. Maps are so inspirational when you're looking at, um, uh, when you're trying to figure out what your characters are going to bump into because you have a nice visual representation of what that might be. You know, oh, I just realized, right, in this outline, I just realized that on this road, they're going to have to cross a river. I'm going to make this road go across the river. It's going to cross the river into Randall's hut, right? They're going to have to cross this one river three or four times, the same river. And that makes me wonder, oh, what's this river called, you know? Um, what, uh, you know, I'm gonna have to describe that, right? And I'm creating a world here that's gotta be believable and it's gotta be consistent. So looking at this map, I'm thinking, oh man, there's so much here. They're gonna have to pass by the ruins of Marthor on their way. So maybe uh, when they get here, when they look to the to the north, I'll, I might even mention something about you know you you feel this kind of angst, this uh, uh, kind of nauseating uh, musk coming from the north where Marthor is, the ruins of this once glorious city now destroyed because of this disease. Right. So, just looking at this map, I'm getting inspired of what I'll include in the game. So. Always, I always try to have a map, and that's kind of why I'm making this. So, anyway, I'm going to get back to drawing more specifics. So, uh, this river, I'm actually going to start making rivers. All right. And there, I'm actually going to do... See, I'm drawing along the outline. I'm going to try a new technique. And this river is coming from the mountains, we'll say, so it's going to be Now watch this. Let's see if let's see how this works. Uh, usually 
so bad at this. The more you zoom in to a river, the better an, uh, an idea it becomes to draw the river as two lines. And you see how terrible I am at this, but I have a feeling like I might get better later on or come back and kind of redo it when I don't have such like a twitchy hand here. Racing things with a Cintiq is much easier than in real life, but with a Cintiq you get you don't get that cool erased feel. So anyway, all right, now I'm jumping in here. Lower the brush size. Rivers. Go to the lakes. Erase this and make it a little more fluid. That works a little bit. Okay. And then we're gonna go not that it looks alright. Let's go to forest here and erase right, erase this tree. Uh, make sure that rivers is below forest. In fact, let me put below forest first, and then yeah. Oops, wrong one. Watch what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna do something that I'm gonna be super proud of. I'm gonna take forest, and I'm gonna draw a tree here. There, and I'm going to erase the river behind it. Yeah, that way there's no river in front of the tree because that doesn't make sense. All right, so let's shut off the outline, make sure that I'm in the zoom. And so far, Sursaline is starting to kind of come together, at least the, the part of the session that these players are going to be part of. Now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to fix things and stuff like that. And again, keep in mind that I'm going to be <laughs> in the future absolutely paying Nate Vanderzee. I don't care if he denies me. I'm going to pay him to do this for me because I want to have the map done and then hand it to him and say, hey man, turn this into something more beautiful. Um, but it's still very useful for me to have for all the reasons I've already talked about. So, all right, let's take a look at the questions. Um, Jacob Norman says, I'm the same way. I like the way some of them look, but I feel like I should draw on my own. All right, you're talking about the brush packs. In fact, I started doing that for New Brook, then just drew it because the brushes were actually limiting. That's absolutely right. Brush packs are great, but it's like sometimes a brush pack doesn't have what you're looking for. Or like if you're, maybe it doesn't have this specific mountain you're looking for or a volcano, but you can draw that. And then you look at the brush pack and you're like, you know what? I can draw this stuff. It'll take forever, but I'd rather do it myself. So that's exactly how I feel. Oh, Jack Vandermullen also already said, oops, there's a tree in the river. Happy I took care of that for us. Uh, although the new tree is a little bit small, so I'm going to have to redraw it. Check in the comments on the YouTube feed. Thanks, everyone, for joining me. Again, I apologize for this a million times. I'm sorry there's no live chat. That's stupid, it's silly, really sad uh, uh, that it's not working. Matt just said he's frantically taking notes on where Barker thinks they're going in the session. And here's the thing though, is I've learned this from Tim Carney and I have, oh man, you, you probably heard this advice, but he gave me this advice and it stuck with me, okay? And this is why I love maps so much, especially this map. Um, is because he taught me about Chekhov's gun. And I've always known about Chekhov's gun, but now I really relate to it. Now, what Chekhov's gun is, it's an, a, an idea when you're writing fiction, 
that says, if you hang a rifle on the wall in the first chapter, that rifle needs to be fired by, I think it says in the second chapter, but it has to be fired at some point, right? You don't add something to the, the story if there's no point to it. Um, well, unless you're Game of Thrones and you can do that all you want. But anyway, the, the, the idea is Chekhov's gun. And, and for a long time as a GM, I was thinking, I am going to fire this Chekhov's gun today. You know, these, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to give the characters this Chekhov's gun to shoot today. When in reality, what I should have been doing, well, not what I should have been doing, but what I'm going to start doing now is I'm going to say, all right, there is, let's create a new layer actually, just so I don't mess up again. I'm going to put a goblin ambush Chekhov's gun and I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to put uh, a mysterious body found right here, that Chekhov's gun. I'm going to put a, uh, a family in need of rescue uh, drowning in the river. That's the Chekhov's gun. I'm going to put, you know, there's a city up here, right? I'm going to put a, uh, a, an aerial race right there. That's a Chekhov's gun. I'm going to put uh, an underground ruined city uh, that's been overrun by kobolds. I'm going to put that Chekhov's gun right there. I'm going to put... Uh, this a, a different adventure idea, Chekhov's gun right there. And then I, when, when all this is filled out with all of these ideas, I ask the players, okay, where do you want to go? And they can pick anywhere and I have something lined up. And that is the end game for this whole process that I'm in right now is creating, all, uh, creating the map so I can create all these Chekhov's guns and put them everywhere. So... If Matt decides, you know what, we're not going to Hall Hall this session. We're going to go to this place, this other place. I'll have something for them. That's the idea, and I'm going to start doing that in my future games that I run. I'm going to start doing that faster than before. And you know what makes it easy? You know what makes it easier now because it used to be so hard? What makes it easier now is having a map, having the whole map. Before, I didn't have this whole map, and now I do, and it's so, it's so much easier because I got this whole thing out of the way. Um, it's just, it's nice having a full world. So uh, that's, uh, that's what I'm doing, and I hope, that's, I hope that helps. Looking at the other comments and other questions. Awesome. One of the... There's not too many questions. It's, I guess one of the benefits of doing a, uh, a stream in the middle of the day. So, all right, jumping right back into making the map. Um, what is it, 2.30 right now? Probably go for another 30 minutes or so. So, all right, let's take a look at my outline. And I will see that there is a river that uh, runs from the mountains to this fjord right here. So I'm going to go to Rivers, and I'm going to start drawing that one. I find that it's very visually appealing to make more snaky rivers the more zoomed in you are so let's see what works out very perfectionist here. Let's hide the forest. It's going to go into this river. It's going to go in at an angle.
We'll make that part of the river wider. That sounds good. Because I made a mistake and I made it too wide there and I'm like, nope, my world's changed. That's called wide part of the river. We all know where that part is. It's because it's wide. <laughs> what am I talking about? <laughs> I got myself. <laughs> Woo! All right. Okay. Let's take the coastline here and erase this bit. All right. Splendid. Let's get rid of the. Okay, let's, let's go to this river, which it should have probably put on its own layer, but that's all right. I'll connect those in a better way. Nope, actually, I'm going to erase this and make it a little. Still. There we go. That's much better, in my opinion. Uh, get rid of the outline. Zoom out. Got some river. All right, second river there. Now let's add the forest and see how screwed up everything is. Wow, not too bad. Not too bad, actually. All right, let's hide that river. I'm going to fix this for oh, forest. Fix this tree because it looks a little weird. Right? Nope. There we go. Then get the river, which is underneath the forest layer. And erase it. I think I erased a little too much, but that's okay because I can always just go back to rivers. I don't know, go back to drawing. And there we have it. All right. Oh, I have my two rivers drawn. And, uh, yeah, really cool. Let's take a look at and see where. Let's hide everything else. Hide the geography. Let's go ahead and erase. Actually, the outline. Let's erase what we've already used. That was a big brush size. All right, I'm going to erase the rivers. Because, you know, I don't really need them on my outline anymore if I've already used them, right? What up? Oh, that's a road, I think, not a river. Let's see. Let's see where we're at. Oh, yeah. And the road is still right here. alongside the river and I like the idea of the road actually being alongside the river in most places um, which means I don't know I'm not sure if they'll have to cross it yeah I think they will I don't know the whole pur purpose of this road actually is to create a fast route between these two areas and I like to think that this road was made before the forest really exploded so maybe this part of the road will go across this way and then there will be a whole other part that um, kind of goes down to Hallow Hall. We'll see. Cross is there. Yeah, I like that idea. Cool. All right. Um, again, there's more forest to be drawn. So uh, we'll do that in a bit. Just double check the comments and questions. Ba -da 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 -da. Ba -da 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 -da. 
The snakiness of a river, as is from Pitt Mandan, is not only visually appealing, you can use it to suggest how long that river's been there and what the terrain is like. A straighter river is younger and travels over flatter land. Mind you, it's one of those bonus details. That's very interesting, actually. I really like that idea a lot. Um, I, you know, it tells you a lot about the geography. This whole area is kind of like a tundra, you know, kind of like a colder area, not too much growth. Um, but the, uh, uh, but, but so, so maybe that might show why the, uh, the river is somewhat snaky, but not terribly because the, the land is so flat. So I like that. So does the river flow Southwest from Maricor and join up with the Northern river? No, uh, the river flows from Southwest. You're right. From the South, from the mountains near Hallow Hall. I like the idea of there being like some sort of waterfall there. Actually, I'll keep that there so I can remember that. That keep that begins this river, maybe some sort of glacial melt from the top of the spires. That's a really good idea. The spires, again, are really tall mountains, really cold. Glacial melt creates this river that flows, splits off, and part of it empties into a lake, and the other part empties into the sea. So it does run from south to north. So... What, the rivers diverge? Have you ever seen that happen? Uh, it actually does happen in the real world on very rare occasions, but I have absolutely only seen it happen one time in this world in the middle of a magical forest. So. Hi, let's play Dota. Ah, I don't play Dota, sorry. But that's not like a terrible, terrible game. It's not like I'm like, I don't play Dota. I don't play that. But uh, I just don't. Um, why don't you make your own brush pack? Uh, I could, but I also don't. I don't, I don't know. I just really like to draw things. Like I said before, I'm going to test out brush packs and make my own and stamping and stuff like that, like Jacob and Dwayne have recommended. But I just love drawing stuff. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. checking out the comments, but YouTube is taking a while to load. It's almost like there's a huge online and physical convention happening right now. Yeah, yeah it's called bifurcation or bifurcation. Very rare, but yeah. So Matt has jumped in and said, yep, that's exactly what uh, river splitting means, Dwayne. Um, but yeah, very rare. Uh, I actually learned it on uh, Bill Nye while watching Bill Nye. So, um, awesome! Uh, rock, rock tonic, or rock stonic, or roke stonic, or rock sto onic. Fifty-two. Sorry. What was it James would say rock stonic fifty-two because rock stonic fifty-one was taken. Um, I'm happy that you got so much out of Campaign Master. That's really cool. I I love that you got so much out of it, but I promise you that nobody got more out of it than I did because it was like I got to build the supplement that I needed. That was huge. Let's see. Or rather, would you consider making your own brush packs or do you prefer doing it in the moment stuff? I don't know. I just like drawing stuff. Yeah, I just like drawing stuff. Uh, this person had a non-mapping question. Just got back from watching Warcraft. Have you seen it yet? I have not seen Warcraft yet. I really want to. I have heard that, and I won't, I mean, I'll, I'll just say what everyone else knows. I've heard the critics hate it and the fans love it. So to me, way to go. That excites me. I'm excited to see it. Um, I used to play World of Warcraft in like circa 2005, like crazy, and I stopped. So I'm, I'm excited to see if I get kind of sent back in time a little bit. That'll be fun. All right, checking one more time for questions, and then, and then maybe I'll take my chances at drawing, I don't know, mountains, or I might actually just call it a day, you know, might, uh, I got kind of some basic stuff down. Um, 
We'll see. Oh, dude, I'm sorry I spent that question on a Dota question, but bro, there's no live chat. There's no way I can keep track of the questions. Like, And the question feed is just filled. Wait, what? Oh, yeah, the question feed is just filled um, because I haven't removed any questions. So, um, I think that's pretty much it. I think that's it. Uh, I'm, right now, I'm feeling less mappy and more preppy. Preppy? I'm throwing my polo and my sideways visor and pretend it's 1997. That's way too early for that. That's like 99, I think. I used to wear a visor, but that's because I played tennis. And if you play tennis, you wear a visor. Everybody knows that. Unless you're balding right here, because then you end up with a red yarmulke. Um, I, uh, yeah, right. But, it, you know, I'd like to, this is was a cool prep thing for me to do, this map, because I got to really get in my head where everything is. And that excites me, because it means that, a lot of what I've already decided, um, it, it's showing me the timeline. Like for example, there's an army marching from one place to another on this map. And it showed me that they're gonna get there faster than I thought they would. And that's exciting. Um, it also showed me that it's totally okay for there to be, you know, for it to take a couple days to get someplace. Um, yeah, this was, this was good for me. But now I'm gonna start actually getting on a sheet of paper and a index card and start really prepping on certain things. So a um, couple more questions before I depart. Actual question, what's the most unique type of environment you feel um, that I've come up with? That I've come up with? A unique type of environment. Um, honestly, the if you watch session three of the Winds of Cersaline, the inside of the Crimson Wood it's like magical and jungly. Uh, I that I think is really unique and cool. Like I, there's a a type of like it's so dark in there, right? Because the canopy of the forest has covered the sun, and things evolve so quickly in there that there's like a type of life form that is like a bubble, and all it does is take in light, like it breathes in light and holds it. And so, like let's say the players will have a torch, the the bubble will go in and breathe some of that light in and the torch will become dimmer, you know, just to survive, right? It's heat. Um, so I thought that was really cool. I think a lot of the, the flora and fauna inside the forest are things that I had, I'm really proud of. Uh, the uh, mania orchid named by Cassie, right? Um, was just one of the coolest things I think that, popped into my mind. So I really enjoyed the hallucinogenic properties of it. Anyway, um, looking at some other things. Do, 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 do. Barker brainstorm. Yep, this is a bark storm. I'm gonna do a bark storm later. Mm. Yeah. And refreshing the comment feed for one last time to check any comments. Um, uh, Axel then asked, how do you get into chat? There is none. <laughs> There's no chat. I'm sorry again. And that's it. I think that's it. So thank you everybody for joining me on my spur of the moment, random uh, uh, mapping, ranting YouTube fist fight that I jumped into. Um, I hope you got something out of this. I know I did. I got this map, which I will show you one last time, um, which doesn't look like I made so much progress, but in fact, I'll show you this. Uh, this is what I got, right? This is the, this is the map of Sir Celine so far. Not too much, but this right here, this outline, and this right here is just gonna, it's gonna keep me going. And I'm really excited to flesh the whole thing out. So um, thank you all for jumping in. Thanks for, uh, for chatting with me and all your questions and comments and stuff like that. I hope all of you have a wonderful day. Double tap peace. Godspeed. And I will talk to you all later. Bye.